This world is like a story, a tale that never ends. Then tell me your thoughts, and I shall spin them into a grand song. That's quite understandable. I've lived quite a long and rich life, so you may want to sit down while I tell my tale. My past is more varied and tenuous than you might think. My earliest memory goes back to an unknown time. I recall waking up in an old Mary ship, sailing through seas of bitter cold. Angry waves and dark skies dominated my view, from horizon to horizon. I knew not where I was, and the other passengers were grievously wounded. Some were missing limbs, others were covered in burns and scars, all refused to say a word. Even the navigator stared silently, his jaw set, shoulders squared. Of that I knew not. I alone had escaped injury, and for months uncounted we sailed upon chartless waters. One by one they died off, until only myself, the navigator, and two others remained. Still they refused to speak, and what little I could glean from the books and charts suggested we had originally sailed to bring about a new dawn in a land that Auriel had forsaken. It gets stranger. As I was exploring this ship that had became my world, I came across a hatch carved beneath the deck. Inside was a vast amount of books, scrolls and tomes. I found I could read most of them with ease, suggesting that I was a scholar of some note. Little by little, I reacquainted myself with the world of man and myrrh. I learned of the founding of the Sigix and the split of Old Mary society. I watched the sunbirds of Alinor journey to Aetherius in search of our celestial origins and return with otherworldly minerals. I witnessed Topal's expedition for Aldmeris and how he charted much of Tamriel before his return to Somerset. Indeed, from the age of those books, I suspected I was in the early Merethic era. Yet it was not until we had almost reached port, a full year after I had awakened, were my suspicions confirmed. Ships flying the Dureni flag bombarded us as soon as we were within sight, and we never stood a chance. I slipped overboard and swam for shore as the ship I once knew as the whole world sank behind me. Thus, my life as an exile began. With cunning and skill. I evaded House Dureni and lived upon the edges of society for centuries, using illusion magic to conceal my identity. Eventually they left the island of Somerset and settled in High Rock, and I was no longer hunted. Yet I had been estranged for far too long, and sought nothing but quiet isolation. Thus I travelled north, and spent the better part of the first era sequestered in the Crystal Tower, studying and browsing the endless stores of knowledge held there. The Slowed they invaded my island home and raised the dead interred atop the crystal tower with their foul necromantic rituals. That day was the first I was forced to take a life. My fellow mages and I defeated the undead, and I used solar magic to fend off the invading slowed fleet. Six years of constant bloodshed followed, until the last of them turned tail and fled back to Thras. We were victorious, yet I could not stay, as Somerset brought up too many dark memories. I set foot on the mainland for the first time, upon the shores of Valenwood. There I had read of a machine far beneath the Tower of Green Sap, where one can step inside and be shown their inner self. I was hoping such a contraption would dispel the veil of memory so obscure, and reveal why I was on that ill-fated expedition, and why I was hunted by the Dureni. I did, but not the answers I seek. When I stepped in the centre of that aura, a golden acorn flashed high above, and for a second the entire tower of green sap seemed to think, ponder, contemplate its very existence, while it fluctuated through what can only be described as all its states of being. Suddenly, the infernal machine showed an image of an Elder Scroll, before the entire tower collapsed back into one single form, no longer sentient. Not yet. Such dramatic interplay with one of the towers was almost unheard of, and it took all my diplomatic skill to convince the Bosmer I meant them no harm. However, once I succeeded in that regard, I was pressured to stay in Valenwood and act as a sort of emissary between them and their mobile tower. There I stayed, learning their culture and the ways of peace until the Three Banners War swept through Valenwood and I departed under cover of darkness. Molag Baal and his plane meld was a threat I could not ignore, 
and I travelled north to Cyrodiil, slaughtering Daedra and destroying Dark Anchors wherever I could find them. When the Planar Vortex was finally destroyed and learned safe from Daedric rule, I headed northwest into Morrowind, following rumours of an Elder Scroll secured within the Mushroom Towers of House Telvanni. I did, but at a terrible price. The Telvanni wizard graciously allowed me to study his scroll, and I did just that, for many days. I saw disjointed pieces and disconnected ideas floating about like leaves in an autumn gust. I realised I would need a trained interpreter to help me decipher the scroll. However, the Tolvani wizard had been watching me for days and realised I could not be blinded from an Elder Scroll. He demanded I stay while he conducted experiments on me, and I refused. There we duelled, I with dawn magic from Aldmeri times, and he with twisted spells gleaned from his research. We laid waste to his tower, as well as the surrounding village, until I finally slew him and claimed his scroll. Yet I was also consumed by sorrow and grief at the destruction I wrought, and found to never again claim an innocent life. It was. I fled Morrowind, barely avoiding the wrath of House Telvanni, and lost my pursuers amid the swamps of Black Marsh, where they dare not tread. There I stayed, starting a new life as a mentor in a tribal village. Centuries passed, and I was quite content to live out the rest of my days here, until the opening of the Oblivion Gates heralded a new chapter of war. The Hist called to the Argonians, and I fought with them to vanquish Dagon's forces. We closed gate after gate, and fought with such ferocity that Dagon's generals admitted defeat, and retreated from Black Marsh. However, my thoughts went out to Somerset, the first place I called home, and I bid farewell to my tribe and left to defend my homeland. I was simply trying to atone for my actions in Morrowind. In the end, when I arrived, I was already too late. I witnessed the fall of the Crystal Tower, and something within me resonated when the structure fell. I was consumed with hatred for Dagon and the forces of Oblivion, and slew scores of Dremora without mercy and retaliation. Yet I knew I had gone too far when one of the eldest survivors recognised my magic, and claimed I was an Aldmer of times long past. No. I knew I could no longer walk among the world of Man and Myrrh, and that peace and meditation was the only way to keep myself under control. I departed on the next ship to Skyrim, and sought refuge with the Greybeards of High Hrothgar. I told them the truth, the same tale I told you, and they strived to teach me peace through meditation, contemplation, and worship of the gods. I have been with them ever since, learning of the world below through only distant whispers. Not distinctly, although sometimes I recall dim visions, like from a half-remembered dream. Dark figures, in the dim light before dawn, whispering, chanting. I see a dark shape rising to dominate the horizon, while a sense of overarching order, stability fills my soul, like the very bones of the earth are being made solid here, and yet something was wrong. A clarion call, shadows swooping overhead, Harsh cries, dissonant voices, flashes of light, and finally, darkness. But then I wake, and I sense something was still left undone, like I failed before my life even began. Perhaps, I still have the Elder Scroll, seized from Morrowind. If it could be deciphered, then I might know who I really was. I've heard of a moth priest at the College of Winterhold who might be able to help. Come, let's get this scroll to him as fast as we can. Ah, greetings. How can this elderly scholar be of assistance? You have one here? Oh, extraordinary! Yes, yes, I believe I can. Such a rare opportunity. I would be more than happy to read it for you. Ah, yes. Uh, give me a moment. Hmm. I see a great expanse of frozen white far to the north. 
a land of perpetual winter which has long been forsaken. Amidst the storm of chaos where the icy tower waits, the Dawnstone and the fiery hunter shall contend with sundered memory, their roles reversed. Time and space shall be split asunder, the last bastion of order shall crumble, and the hearts of dawn and fire shall finally find peace. Uh, I must rest now. This reading has taken a heavy toll upon me. Hmm. Most of his answers are rather cryptic, but one part does make sense. The forsaken land of perpetual winter, far to the north. That can only be Atmora, the ancient homeland of the Nords. I'm sure I've been there before, done something of great importance there. I have a feeling the answers we seek are just out of reach. If we can find a ship stout and sturdy enough, then I'm sure I can remember enough to sail back to Atmora. Good question. The East Empire Company is the preeminent shipping company in Skyrim. I'm sure we can purchase a ship and enough supplies for a long journey from them, or privateer one for our cause if necessary. Let's head on over to Solitude and see what we can find. 